Good morning, Cliff Potts. It is June 6th, 2011. Welcome. June 6th makes this the anniversary of D-Day. I guess it's an appropriate time to uh, discuss a little bit of history. A few things I'm going to do today. One, I am going to address a note I got from my friend Eric in Facebook. I promised him I'd do that. Then <clears throat> I am going to talk about the size of Palin's foot. Yeah, that's right, good old Sarah Palin. And her flunkies. Then I am going to touch on some very basic fundamentals about our nation. And finally, depending on how long this goes, I am going to be talking about the achievements of Obama, <clears throat> which I promised you last week and got sidetracked because uh, Rand Paul decided to s tell the nation that he wanted to arrest me because I have grievances uh, against this government. <clears throat> Go figure that one. So, let me uh, take a minute, pull some information together, and I will be right back. Bend down, isn't it a pity? Doesn't seem to be a shadow in the city. All around, people looking half dead, walking on the sidewalk harder than a match here. Uh, as you know, <clears throat> I mentioned Eric uh, in one of my videos last week, and uh, he was working as an intern in D.C. for his congressman in uh, Minnesota when I first met him on Youth for Press. He is in opposition of about everything I stand for, and I'm in opposition about everything he stands for, but we get along so well because I don't know why. <laughs> because we're both respectful of, of each other's opinions is really what it is. But I got this note from Eric. I won't read the whole thing to you. But the one thing that I would... I would ask, and <clears throat> it's quite simple. And this is something I hear about from people on both the left and the right, so I'm, I'm kind of curious about it. What exactly is the government doing that is limiting your freedom? I, I want specifics, you, <clears throat> Eric specifically, but people in general, where you're at in your life, what is the government not allowing you? you to do that you think that you have the right to do. I want to know exactly what this government, whether it was under Bush or Obama, we don't have to go back any further than that, just within the last decade, I want to know exactly what this government is not allowing you to do. Now, I know I've seen some things. Uh, like when the Dallas Police Department uh, unlawfully arrested uh, Steve at the first rally in support of education back in March of this year. Uh, once he was hauled in, it created an air of intimidation, which then trickled down and affected all other uh, you know, rallies that we had up until the time I left. And uh, but that is not something you can blame on Obama or, or Bush, Obama or Bush, because that is something that was done <clears throat> by the Dallas Police Department. So, you know, and of course, why it just sits there is because 
no charges were filed against Steve. You know, or, or let me put it this way, they dropped the charges. Of course they dropped the charges. That thing ever went to court, a judge would have reamed their ass. They had no grounds. Now, this is what I've seen, okay? So, you know. But in that case, then the grievance is not against the federal government or Barack Obama. The grievance is against the Dallas Police Department. Now, I know of another case where the FBI raided a couple in, I believe it was Minnesota, specifically because they were peace activists who had hosted, for a short time, a couple of members who were affiliated with FARC down in Colombia. And because these people were affiliated with FARC, that meant our two citizens were then suspect of FARCing without a license? How, how do I know? But it, it again, it is an issue of uh, overzealous police enforcement of laws that don't exist. There are uh, guilt by association. Unless you go through a whole RICO process, doesn't exist. So, you know, I know what I've seen. But I want to know something. You, as an individual citizen, what has happened to you, or like in my case, somebody closely associated to you, which proves beyond any reasonable doubt or if you want to go by the preponderance of the evidence, that you are losing your freedoms under either Bush or Obama in this decade. Well, actually, we're getting into two decades now because it's 2011. <clears throat> be that as it may. Where are you losing your freedoms at? That's just, just what I want to know. Because this whole focus on smaller government seems to hinge on this idea that big government is oppressive. Well, it can be. I'll grant you that. But from what I've seen, small local governments in small to medium-sized cities can also be incredibly oppressive, willfully, illegally, and until it actually hits the Supreme Court, which they're going to do everything they can to keep it from happening, which they did, then they get away with it. And same too with the FBI, by the way. <clears throat> if you don't have the money to take it all the way up to the Supreme Court, then they pretty much do what they damn well please. Now, eventually, one of those type of cases will get that high, and <clears throat> I have very little doubt even as conservative as this court is, that uh, they would basically hand uh, the FBI their ass for some of the crap that's going on. So, yeah. that's that's where I'd like to take this conversation. Where exactly have you lost your freedom in the United States under our current Constitution? different world. Evidently, last week, Sarah Palin pulled off one of her usual foot and mouth statements. Evidently, and I didn't hear it, and I have no intention of looking it up, I have no intention of digging into this any deeper than what it is, but evidently, Sarah Palin misspoke and said that Paul Revere warned the British. Now, whatever. It's, it's a misquote. There, there's, no one, there's no two ways about it. She misspoke. It happens. Lord knows I've done it. <laughs> oh boy, have I done it. You know, it happens. Um... And, of course, the media jumped, well, I don't know if the media jumped on it or if the uh, left-wing bloggers jumped on it. I'm still not quite clear of it. Like I said, I, 
this <coughs> excuse me this is a non story she made a gaffe it happens mazel tov move on you know anyway as a result of that this uh Real small news flash popped up in Facebook, and I'm not going to dig into this too deeply. There's some evidence of it. But according to Little Green Footballs, whatever the heck that is, and there is evidence because there's a couple links within the article that show what's going on, that Palin fans were trying to edit the Wikipedia page to rewrite history to conform to the Palin gaffe. I cannot fathom that level of abject <clears throat> stupidity. Not only let's understand this. These guys have no respect for history. They have no respect for the story of the nation. They have no respect for events of the nation. But by God, they know how to use Wikipedia and how to edit it. Hell, I don't even know that. They were bothered to learn. It's insane. It is beyond insane. It, it, it's just, this gives you an idea of just how fundamentally flawed her wrecking crew really is. It's absolutely amazing. And obviously it's not everybody that follows Palin. You know. It's a few who know how to work with Wikipedia that decided to rewrite history for Sarah Palin. Which is just mind-blowing just absolutely beyond the Paul. It's also beyond Paul Revere. If uh, <clears throat> you want the truth of the matter, we'll do this on a thumbnail here. Uh, Paul Revere. So, hang on. Let me uh, see if I can find something for you. <clears throat> 